tuning in. This is your host, I would understand. We're here live, real sense now. This guy's really a disruptor. I mean, he's taken over my show. His name is Joe Mobahill. He's a manager to Boyce the Man in St. Road Manager to St. Joey Capone, Jackson's, En Vogue, Salt Pepper. List goes on. Taylor Dane. I mean, the guy does everything. I mean, he's a producer, writer. I want to talk about all of your business acumen. I, I want you to share what a lot of people are talking about right now. Okay. Entrepreneurship is trending. It's yeah. a trending topic. I think as a result of COVID, a lot of people have gone out and created a new business. They didn't have anything to do. They kind of sat at home and they became artists. They became producers. They became singers. And now with the advent of all of these different platforms, there are so many different ways that you can scale and become relevant in the music industry. Don't need a, a label uh, per se. You could put out a lot of good music on right. whatever platforms, and you can really create a name out there. Post Malone. Post Malone. Oh, there. T- t- Post Malone SoundCloud. Just a few little tracks caught fire. Kids started liking it with the Instagram, and, and all, next thing you know, he became Post Malone. And th- that's how easy it could be. These and, days. And now, that- by, by the way, it's not easy. Let's just get don't don't get it twisted. It's not easy. He's a very <clears throat> he's a very rare uh, case, but it does happen. And, but it goes to show how technology has really <clears throat> changed the way we interact with each other. Totally. And I, I think, you know, one of the things you can speak to, which is something that I'm a massive fan of, the, the currency of the world that we live in right now, we live in a relational economy, and the currency is relationship. Right. You have proved more than once that through your vast network, you have been able to create and bring back to life a lot of people's careers, create a lot of different opportunities, and you have your hands in a lot of cookie jars. We were talking about COVID. You were telling right. me some funny stories right. about what, what what were you doing when you didn't have anything to do? Outside of the health, I absolutely loved COVID. I loved being home. I loved not having to travel. <clears throat> I thought it flushed out all the wannabe people who didn't, uh, who, who, were, who were surviving just by barely getting by, but was decision makers. And what COVID did was it flushed all that out because you had to deliver because there was nothing really to do. So we we came up with a few concepts. Uh, we had a thing called What Does Joey Know on COVID every day we were on. It was a game show thing. It actually worked out to be pretty good. We uh, developed uh, two guys from Backstreet, guy from uh, Boys to Men and Joey. We put a show on in Las Vegas right when COVID ended, pretty much when COVID ended, to kind of celebrate that music would be back. But it was great because you heard Backstreet, you heard Sync, you heard Boys to Men. We had Luis Fonzi show up. We had Bobby Brown show up. We had Coolio uh, before he passed. He showed up. It was just like a huge celebration of music. And I think that's what COVID taught us It was a sold-out show, by the way. Yeah, it was four nights. Yeah, it was fun. Very fun, actually. We, um, I how, think, did, how did that come about? Seriously. Like, COVID, I mean, you literally sitting there going, we need to have some fun. We need to give hope to people. But it wasn't just to people, it was to ourselves. So Nick Carter and AJ were like, I'm in. I got to do something. I got to do something. That was that attitude. <clears throat> so what happened is we all kind of just came up with this concept. We wrote on a napkin how it would kind of work out. And we hired a musical director. We put a band. We know him, I can. And we put it all together. And, and next thing you know, it was four nights of just, it was really fun. And at the time, I didn't appreciate it. But when I look back on the videos and I sometimes I sit in the office and I'll see it. And I'm like, wow, that was really good. Like, that was really good what we did. That's part of my problem. I don't really celebrate at the time. Like, you reading some stuff that I've done. I'm sitting here going, who's that guy? Like, I don't think it's really me. Now, that's a self thing that I've never figured out why, but I kind of like it because it keeps me going. I never just celebrate. Oh, I'm the man. I can do this. And I never really think that way. So I just kind of get a victory or we have a win and I'm already looking what's next. I'm learning to enjoy that now. And what that's what COVID did for me. It, it was a huge timeout and it made me sit back and go, man, you got to really kind of enjoy life and try new things and do some different stuff. That's what COVID helped me out personally from. So what is next for you? Next? I don't know. Well, I do know. There's two or three projects that we're working on now. Um, that I believe in. Anything so, you can talk about? Not yet, but I believe in it enough to do things that people aren't doing to get it done. And that's probably where where I kind of fall in. Like I'll do some stuff that nobody will do because it's a pain or it's a yeah, it's a headache or it's an extra effort. But I've learned that if you do things that other people aren't doing, you're going to get the results. And that that's I'm able to do stuff that people want to do because I do things that they don't want to do. 
So Damn. here's a here another Damn. one. Another one. I don't do any of Cala's quotes. But, okay. And that's another thing I can't stand. Not Cal and I love Cal. I mean, I can't stand uh what do they call those? Memes. Like not memes, but like a twelve dozen half a day. What's that stupid saying? Oh, six of one, half a dozen of the hate other. Hate it. No. Uh there's another one I hate. I, I any of those little cliche things, I can't stand with So here's say. a great idea for you. Since I'm you- so blessed. I hate that word. I hate that word. And it's not fair because some people religiously really believe that. Me personally, hate the word. It's overused. What I really else do you hate? I really don't. appreciate you. Do you really? Do you really? Or is that just a saying that you're saying? Like, that's the problem with humans. We get caught up in repetitiveness. We don't want to do the extra effort stuff. So we use words like blessed. I feel so blessed. You're miserable. What do you mean you feel blessed? Yes, we're all blessed. We're alive. Let's just break it down to that. So do you guys understand why sometimes you're just way too much in the morning when I see you at the gym? Of course. You tell me that all the time. You walk by me. I'm like, what's up? You're like, not now. And you just keep walking. I'm Trust me. I've been there. I've seen it. And, and you know what? And I'm supposed fine. to be the host on the show. And like, you know what? When do you want to fill in for me? Because I think I might be taking off next week or no, whatever. No, don't take off. You're, don't good. Take off. you're good. You're good. I'm all right. You're really, yeah, we're doing you're really good. good. Okay. So listen, I have a great business idea for you. Go. You put this incredible ensemble together for After Party. Yep. Why don't we just like get them to like put an album out together? Because okay. that would be incredible. Can you imagine it all would, of them in but one here's band? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's just be very, very clear. That what we did in Vegas was incredible. Backstreet has a tremendous business that they're doing. Boys to Men's touring constantly. Joey Fatone's been doing a bunch of movies. So scheduling that, piecing it's it together is not as easy. Right? Yeah. It's not that it's impossible, but it's difficult. And the timing of it doesn't feel as right. That felt great for the after party. We had AAA. Um, yeah, I saw that. That was pretty AAA. awesome. So that's Talk kind of a, about that. So AAA that was came amazing. with a concept. They wanted two Spice Girls and two boy band guys to come up with this concept with with um, with commer- with uh, insurance. But that Some was your idea, right? Or no, their, their I, original okay. idea was to have Spice Girl. They wanted two girls and two guys. Really couldn't get it to work. The deal was dead. I asked the advertising agency, can you put me on the phone with the end buyer just so I can walk through what we've done in my org and my want? I don't know. So we got on a Zoom and I said, what's up? Here's my idea. And I told him my idea. And I literally said to the person on the phone, you know, you, I, oh, I asked them, what are you trying to accomplish? What I tell you early in the interview? The first thing I asked people, tell me what you want. She told me and she basically told me everything I needed to hear to know what I was going to come back with was right on the money. I came back with it. They loved it. Next thing you know, it was Nick Lachey. Joey Fatone and Wanye, and then they said, can we add a fourth? So we put a list of fourths together who we think would fit in perfectly. Luckily, Joey McIntyre was on top of the list. We text him, and he was like, I kind of like the idea. Let's run it through my people. So we ran it through his people. His people came back. They love it. Two weeks later, we're in L.A. shooting a commercial. They all had a great time. Personally, they did something different. Like, they stepped out of their comfort zone, too, which is probably the most difficult thing with anybody. If I asked you, hey, by the way, let's go do this. I'm not doing that. Whether it's jumping out of an airplane, whether it's high uh, uh, gliding, hang gliding, whatever that is, whether it's bungee jumping, whether it's swimming with sharks, whether whatever it is, there's comfort zones that we all as humans are kind of blocked in that, oof, we don't want to do that. Imagine yourself as an entertainer that everybody looks at you, everybody judges you, everybody has an opinion of you, everybody thinks you should be doing this or doing that, and then I come along and go, hey, you should do this AAA commercial. And they're all like, dude, that sounds cheesy. We're not going to do it. But we made sure that all the protective measures were put in place that they wouldn't look cheesy. And it would look, we had final approval. And I say we, meaning collectively, all the guys and their people, which is rare in this business. Normally, it's a director that says, no, it's this way. We made sure that they were all comfortable with it. And that's kind of the secret to what we do is everybody has to be – I can't just win. I can't. If I just win – and the talent doesn't win, then my reputation is be careful of Joe because he'll put you in a position where he gets paid a ton of money, but you look like an idiot. But it's not I that would, it's not that too, because of one reason. Like when you look at that end product, it gave back to more than one generation that has connected with these guys. But for it's easy to say that now decades. that it's over with. But no, no, no I get it. But, but you didn't go through this. I know, but you didn't get the convincing project, uh, the, 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 the part of it that they had to do it or want to do it. You have to convince them why what you're seeing is beneficial to them. Like, that's the secret to what we do. And what we do is we convince people. You know how many times I get, I'm not doing that, that's stupid. I'm not doing that, that's stupid. And then by the end of it, they're in an interview. Like, you know, I thought about it. I thought it would be a great idea. And I'm sitting there like, really? really? It took me four months to convince you to say yes. But you know what? That's my job. And if, it, and if I didn't have to do that, they wouldn't need me. You know, one of my favorite quotes that I live by, it's a mantra that I live by, which is, if you commit to the magic, the rest will follow. You say it in a really different kind of way, which is, Energy is the greatest gift. And if you follow 
uh, if you allow it to come, it will change your life. It will. And Energy is the, the hands down the key to everything. And, and to you your know, point earlier, by the way, yeah. so if you ask me to do something, more than likely with the elevated level of energy that you have, yeah, I'll probably jump out of that plane with you too. So whatever you want to do, let's go do this after the show. Do you show. know Stephen A. Smith from uh, ESPN? Yeah, I, I, I don't know him, but yeah. But, but you know yeah, of yeah, him, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. He said something that was groundbreaking in, in a lot of different things. When he talks what he believes in, he's not trying to convince you to change your mind. He's just trying to convince you that he really believes what he's saying. Now, it's up to you to change your mind or not. And that's a really interesting thing when you think about it. So when I'm talking to the talent, I'm trying to let them know I really, if I really believe in it. If I really believe in it, my job is to explain to them why I believe in it. Now, it's their job or their decision to go along with it or not. Luckily for me, we've had a lot of really good things happen. Not only just one or two guys. It's happened repeat, like the blueprint's there. So when I go into a room and I talk, I'm talking from data. I'm talking from it's really happened. I'm coming from a place of I've already done this. So I think, and I think you should believe me because I know how to get it done. And I know it's not going to be easy. And I know there's going to be roadblocks. And I know there's going to be people bitching and complaining. But at the end of the day, we're going to find a way to win that everybody in the room But I, I think you're touching on probably one of the most important and uh, n not talked about traits, characteristics that you need in life, in business. We do this all the time. And basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get people to enroll into your worldview, into your vision, so that they can align with what you're trying to do or maybe what they need to do in their life to get on board and make it happen. A lot of people I find tend to be on the edge. I see it all the time with people that I'm working with when it comes to real estate, right. whether it's a family, whether it's uh, an investment. Um, you know, We're buying a building right now. And I literally have to like walk through every step of the process and enroll the investor into what the potential outcome is going to look like. Is it fear? Are they are they you know, fear? I think or? a lot of the time it's really understanding what the other person is going through and, and what frame of reference that they're dealing with in terms of either fear, insecurity. What I tend to find is they just don't have enough information. And I think information is really important. Like, you know, when I'm sitting down here and I go, I know you like the house, uh, you want to buy it, but you're not sure. What are you not sure about? Or the car or, you know, this new business. A lot of the time, the reason why you're not pulling a trigger is because you just don't have enough information about it. And when you, just like you, you enroll them into the worldview, you walk them through the process, you hold their hand and you go, hey, this is what it's going to look like. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But what you really did was you enroll them into the reality of the future that you're trying to create. And you want to see how they align with that worldview or not. And nine out of 10 times, what happens when people are ready? They're like, Joe, let's go do it. You're right. Let's do it. Right. And they go with the confidence and the ability to take the plunge, take yeah. that deep dive, and then we're making history. Yeah, I tell them all the time, you know, I may not get, if we say we're going to get to the moon or land on the moon, we may not land on it, but we'll circle it. And that, that's a saying of saying, I'll get you as close as we can. But that's not just for them, just for me. Like, in, you don't know what the future is, but you can kind of create an atmosphere that'll get you close to that. You can. That is real. You, you definitely can. And energy, to me, is the key to the whole thing. Stay tuned after the break. We're talking to Joe Mobile. Want to talk about business, energy, and a whole lot more. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. I'll catch you. Weekend. I know, right? Sure. I'll catch you after the break.